Remember this sound? For millions of us, that wasn't just a ringtone. It was the heartbeat of an era. It was texts from your crush, late night calls from your friends, and endless, frustratingly addictive rounds of snake. Nokia wasn't just a phone company, it was a cultural icon, a piece of our lives. And let's be real, the Nokia 3310 wasn't just a phone, it was a tank. You could drop it, step on it, maybe even throw it at a wall, and it would just shrug it off. The battery? It seemed to last forever. At their absolute peak, Nokia commanded over 40% of the entire global mobile market. They were worth a mind-blowing $250 billion. They were untouchable. Then, everything changed. The iPhone arrived, Android followed. And Nokia? They clung to their old ways, underestimating the smartphone revolution. Their big gamble with Microsoft and the Windows Phone platform? Well, it didn't just fail. It tanked spectacularly. By 2015, it seemed like the legend was officially over. A tragic ending to a titan. But here's the twist you probably didn't see coming. Nokia never really died. It evolved. Today, right now, Nokia is quietly dominating the mobile world again, but in ways you might not even notice. So how did they pull off one of the greatest stealth comebacks in tech history? Let's break it down. First, let's talk about the phones themselves. Yes, Nokia still makes phones, and they haven't forgotten their roots. Under the company HMD Global, they've doubled down on what made them famous, insane durability. Take the Nokia XR21. This thing is built to military-grade standards. It's drop-proof, dust-proof, and waterproof. But it's not a brick. It's a modern smartphone with a smooth 120 hertz display and solid Snapdragon power. It's for people who live life, not just scroll through it. And while the world is addicted to giant screens, Nokia is cleverly catering to the growing digital detox movement. They've revived classics like the 2720 flip phone. These simple, elegant devices with week-long batteries are a quiet hit for people wanting to disconnect without being completely unreachable. It's a genius move, serving a need everyone else is ignoring. Second, Nokia is absolutely crushing it in the markets that will define the future. Southeast Asia, Africa, and India. They're not trying to compete with 100,000 rupee flagships. Instead, they're winning hearts and wallets by offering reliable, affordable 5G phones like the G65G to everyday people. What's their secret weapon? Clean, stock Android. No bloatware, no confusing skins, no junk apps slowing things down. Just a smooth, secure experience with fast updates. This builds trust, something flashier brands often forget. Third, and this is where it gets really interesting, forget the device in your hand for a second and think about the network behind it. Every time you stream a movie, make a video call, or game on 5G, there's a very good chance you're using Nokia's technology. They are a global powerhouse in building telecommunications infrastructure. They supply the essential gear to massive carriers like AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon. They're not just building the roads, they're building the entire highway system for our digital lives, including the AI cloud systems that will power the future. This is a multi-billion dollar business that most consumers never even see. Fourth, let's talk about the ultimate power move, patents. Nokia holds a treasure chest of around 20,000 patents, and crucially, about 6,000 of them are essential to 5G technology. What does that mean? It means practically every company that makes a 5G device, yes, including Apple and Samsung, has to pay Nokia a licensing fee. They are literally earning money from every iPhone and Galaxy sold. Their patent division brings in pure, effortless profit. They don't have to manufacture a single product. The royalty checks just keep rolling in. So when you put it all together, you see that Nokia redefined what winning even means. They may not sell the most phones anymore, but they are an essential part of nearly every phone story. HMD Global licenses the Nokia name because that brand still represents trust and durability. Nokia wins when someone buys a rugged XR21 in Europe. They win when a family in India gets their first 5G phone with the G series. And they win every time an iPhone in New York connects to a Nokia-built 5G tower. Nokia didn't just make a comeback, they built the entire system that everyone else now relies on. They don't need the old crown because they forged a new one, invisible, unshakable, and absolutely everywhere. They're still winning the phone game, just not in the way you think. So I have to ask, what was your first Nokia? I bet you have some great memories. Drop it in the comments below, I'd love to hear your stories. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe for more. See you next time.